Well, we're nearing the end uh, of this extraordinary story, getting closer and closer to Christmas, very exciting. Um, we now know that these prophets of old uh, predicted, didn't they, the coming of this Messiah on earth. And uh, we know that they predicted where he would be born in Bethlehem, that he would live in Egypt, he would grow up in Nazareth. But in the end, this great light that was inside him would break out and would shine uh, in Galilee of the Gentiles. And there he'd be like the sun rising with healing in his wings. And those prophecies were so extraordinary. Many of them became more extraordinary the closer we get to the birth of Jesus and Isaiah said didn't he his name will be called wonderful counselor mighty God the everlasting father the prince of peace and his kingdom will know no end and then when the time came for Jesus to be born the angels came and announced it to his mother first and then to his earthly father Joseph and then God moved on earth, didn't he? Uh, and he moved in the mind of Caesar Augustus and Caesar issues a decree, the most important man on earth at that time. And he says, everybody's got to go back where they came from. And this meant that Mary and Joseph would have to travel down from Nazareth, that quite long journey, down to this little town of Bethlehem that one day would become famous worldwide. That name is now known um, and is linked to the birth of Jesus. And they were traveling, weren't they, back down uh, to that town. Uh, here on earth, they, they, they made that journey to get Jesus to the right place. But incredibly, God was moving not just on the earth, he was moving out in space. He was moving out among the stars. And a new star had begun to shine and some astronomers were watching it. They were watching the rising of this star. These are the wise men. These are the kings. These are our people of Christmas for this week. And the Bible doesn't tell us very much about them, but we do know they were very important because they were received into the court of Herod when they went to Jerusalem. We know that they were rich because they bought gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. We know they were clever, they were wise, they were scientists, they were studying the stars. But the Bible also gives us another clue. They came from the east. Now, who had been in the east? Who had been in this area that was once that Persian empire about four or five hundred years before? Men like Daniel, amazing. He'd been the governor of part of that empire. Nehemiah, Ezra, they would have left behind the Hebrew writings. These men would have been familiar with these prophecies. Daniel himself had prophesied. They probably had records of what Daniel had prophesied. But there was someone else who had also lived out in the east. Do you remember? His name was Balaam. And he'd cried out those incredible words, I see him but not now, I behold him but he's not here yet. And then he made this declaration, a star, a star will rise out of Jacob. He came from that eastern region and it could be that those men knew of that ancient prophecy as well from Balaam. And they were so sure, these men, that that star had predicted that this king had been born and was coming, that they decided to journey all the way out across the desert towards Israel to where they thought that that king would be born. So they go on this great journey to find Jesus. They travel this great distance. They leave everything behind. And it just made me think, what, what, what are we willing to do? to find more of Jesus. They were, they were willing to, to go on a great journey to find him. Why did they go all that way? It was probably about 900 miles. Why did they travel that far? They'd got this ancient prophecy and they'd seen this star, but God must have been moving in their hearts because when they came, they said, we've seen his star. It's rising in the east. We've come to worship him. Some of the translations say we've come to adore him. Something was stirring inside them. So they traveled out across the desert. It would have taken them several weeks. And as they traveled, they must have been thinking, well, this is the most important child that's perhaps ever been born, the most important child ever to come to Israel and be born here. Surely they're all getting ready for him. Surely there's a palace. Surely the world is waiting for him. And when they get to Israel, they go straight to Jerusalem, to the king. They presume this is where the new king must have been born. And they arrive there and King Herod welcomes them. And they say to King Herod, where is he? And King Herod says, who? Where's who? And they see the great king. And he says, I'm the great king. There is no other king. And they say, no, no, there's another king. Your ancient writings predict that he'll come. And the Bible says that Herod was disturbed. He was troubled. He was upset. And it says that the whole of Jerusalem was concerned and worried. There must have been a real uproar at that time. 
And so Herod says to his own wise men, well, where does it say this king's coming? Where is this supposed Messiah coming to? And they say, Bethlehem. From you, Bethlehem, a leader will rise who will shepherd my people Israel. And so Herod says, that's fine, he says to the kings. You go to Bethlehem, you find the child and worship him. And then can you send word to me, send a message so that I could come and worship him as well? But actually, he didn't want to worship him. He wanted to kill him because there was any rumor of someone else being a king. He wanted it to end. And so the wise men set out now. It's not a very long journey. They must have been so excited. They must have known we're near the end now. We're going to see him soon. And then to their absolute amazement, the clouds must have moved and they look up and they see, it says, the same star that they'd seen in the east. And the Bible says they were filled with joy. They were overjoyed when they saw the star and they go towards Bethlehem and they find the place. And then it says they see him. And when they see him, the Bible says they fell down, they bowed down, they went down on their knees. These were wise, important, clever men. They were kneeling down in front of a baby. God must have opened their eyes to see who this baby really was. We need him to open our eyes a whole lot more. I need him to open my eyes. And then they bring him gifts. One of the translations says they open their treasure bags. I love that. These kings have got treasure bags and they bring out gold and they bring out frankincense and myrrh. And these were precious, expensive things. What a picture for us because we too have treasure bags. You might say, well, I don't have a treasure bag. I don't have any treasure I could bring to Jesus. Yes, we do. We could give him our time. We could give him our love. We could give him our obedience our friendship, our attention. But there's something in our treasure bags that's worth more to God than all of those things and all the gold and all the frankincense and all the myrrh, and that's our hearts. Why does God so want a human heart? Because it's the place where he can come and live. He, see he seeks nowhere else on earth to live but in our human hearts, and he wants to come, shine in our lives, and light up our whole hearts. The Christmas after I became a Christian and I asked Jesus to come into my heart, I was six years old, it had happened in the summer when we were on a summer holiday at a beach mission, and that Christmas we sang the carol in the bleak midwinter, the following Christmas, um, and for the first time I understood those words of that final at that final verse and it says this what can I give him poor as I am if I were a shepherd I would bring a lamb if I were a wise man I would do my part yet what I can I give him I give him my heart sometimes say to the children that our hearts are like houses they have many rooms and he's knocking at another door another door all the time wanting to come in more bring his light Let's pray this Christmas that God would come in a more real way and shine in our hearts more and more. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for this extraordinary, supernatural, sacred, divine story, Lord, uh, of what happened when you came to the earth. And Father, we pray, could we be like those wise men? Could we be willing to travel a great distance to find you, Lord? Uh, could we come and uh, bow down before you? Could you open our eyes that we would see who you really are? And could we give you gifts, Lord? And especially, could we give you more of our heart? Could I give you, Lord, more of my heart at this time? Amen. Amen. <laughs>